Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm your host, Preston M. Smith. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm Preston M. Smith at PMS Artwork Everywhere on Internet Land and Socials. I want to thank you for landing on this podcast. Whether you're a professional artist, just getting started in the art world, a collector of art, or just consider yourself a creative person, this podcast has something for you. I like to think of it as a fun way to rant and talk to other creative people about living the life of an artist, surviving and getting ahead in the art world, and enjoying your life. But most importantly, not waiting until you're dead to make it happen. All right, let's get started. I'm, I'm sleepy. Frank, tell me a story. Well, okay, kids. Gather round. Once upon a time, there was a little artist. She loved what she created. She created the most beautiful pictures. She was so happy with the creations. But one day, this little girl grew up, and she didn't have anything to fall back on. So she ended up penniless and living in the gutter without a friend in the world. I don't like this story. Oh man, that got dark real quick. (laughs) Sorry about that. I kind of roped you into it. It'll make sense when we get into this episode a little bit. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about story and the importance of telling a story as an artist. And there are many different ways to tell a story in your art, in your life, in your career, and with individual pieces. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Going to give you a brief overview and just give you something to think about and maybe something that you can apply to your own art and career. So we were talking about story on Clubhouse. Alejandro Castagnon and I have a room called The Sustainable Artist, and we meet every Thursday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So whatever that means for you, you can give it a goog and check it out. Um, yeah, we talk a lot about, you know, some great art topics and career topics and painting and art creation topics. And we actually had two sessions in a row where we talked about story and we just realized there was a lot to say and it sparked a bunch of really cool conversations. So I still kind of have it running around in my brain a little bit, bouncing around. So I thought I would just kind of dump a little bit of it out here for some of you who were not in the room. And if you'd like to join the room or join our club, um, they call it a club or a group, it's called The Sustainable Artist. And just when you get on Clubhouse, look for that and you can join us. Then you can get notifications every time we have a room. So story, what is a story as an artist? And do you need to tell a story? Well, you don't need to do anything in art or in life, right? But if you can do something that's going to help you, you might as well learn it. So we talked to a lot of artists and a lot of people were talking in the room about how they're not good at telling stories with their art, or it's at least a skill that they had to learn and develop because a lot of artists are visual storytellers. We're not really used to exercising that muscle of telling a story story either verbally or in written form. But it's something that I definitely had to develop. I mean, I do dabble with writing on the side, but I didn't start out that way. It was just something that I kind of learned and I ended up liking a lot. So I know it's something that anybody can get better at at least. You don't need to be Hemingway or Joyce or Virginia Woolf, but you can get better at it. I promise you. I've seen it in my own art career and, you know, my descriptions of my art. And I've seen it with a lot of other people who develop the skill and it really helps. So this can be as simple as writing a description on your artwork something that kind of sells a piece or gets somebody who's looking at it and maybe they haven't connected with it or they've connected in it, but it hasn't really sunk in what specifically you were trying to say about the piece. Now, I feel two separate ways about this. I think it's kind of like listening to a song. You don't want to push your interpretation too heavily that people can't see anything else because I have a lot of people who come in and have their own interpretation of my work. And if that's very strong for them, I will not interject and say, well, actually, this is what I'm trying to say with my piece. You're wrong. No, it's important for the collector and for the person who's viewing your work to have their own interpretation. But having said that, a lot of people won't have an interpretation 
coming in. So, you know, giving them a little background of you as an artist or of your process or your technique, even, um, you know, what inspired this individual piece. It could be as simple as I was listening to this song and it sparked this creative concept, or it can be, I just love painting flowers. Uh, this has helped me a lot in my life. The colors, the texture has really helped me therapeutically in my own life. And that's what I want to convey to the viewer or the collector, something like that. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be one specific way. Use your strengths, use whatever you, you know, however you approach your art, basically, whatever hooks you into your art is pretty much going to be the thing that hooks other people because it's a valid experience. It's a very unique personal experience. And a lot of those unique personal experiences become something that, you know, the masses can also relate to because we're all human beings. So that's an important thing. Now, it doesn't just have to be about your specific art piece. It can be about you as an artist. Also, a lot of people want to feel like they know the artist, like they have a personal relationship with the artist or as a collector, you know, have a rapport with the artist. I've developed a lot of relationships with my collectors and it's great. You almost feel like friends and I do consider a lot of them my friends and they come back and they buy more pieces because they, not only do they like your work and how you treat them, but they feel like they have kind of an affinity towards you or they feel like they understand who you are as a human being or, or maybe your kindred spirits. So that's important. But also there are people who just like the kind of mythology of being an artist. So if you've got a unique story, uh, for example, with me, it's I was born uh, with alternate day strabismus. I was cross-eyed one day, not not cross-eyed the next. Kind of interesting, but I have no depth perception. So that's kind of a hook for me, how I see the world visually. But also with my transition from pop surrealism into abstract, colorful, bold, textured abstract work. It's kind of like when I made that transition, it was also a transition I was making in my life from darkness into light and overcoming a little bit of my own personal demons and trauma and drinking and things like that. And that really comes through in my work. It's like a parallel between my personal life and my artwork. And that's a very interesting story that people can relate to. And a lot of people, you know, they want to dig deeper or they want to go, oh, you know, I, I relate to that. That's something that I've struggled with in my own life. This idea of personal story or what you're about as an artist comes up a lot. And some people seem to be a little, not confused, but they, they don't really know how to convey why they are an artist and what their work means or signifies or represents or why it's powerful. And I tend to just say, look, why did you get into art in the first place? What was it that got you into art? And typically that ends up being your answer. It's either a struggle that you had personally or something you were working out in your work, some sort of deep emotional, um, it doesn't have to be trauma, but it can also be love. It can be something that you, you have so much joy and energy inside of you that you don't know how to express in another way. And therefore it comes out in your sculpture or in your canvas or in your illustrations or in your photographs. That tends to be a good hook into your story. It's like, oh, this is why I got into art. This is how it's helped me personally. And therefore, this is how it can help you as a viewer. Or this is how you can resonate with it as a viewer. We all have shared experiences as human beings. They're not all completely the same, but a lot of us can relate on some level to what another person's feeling and have empathy for that. Or it can be cathartic for them. So that's a lot of the ways I tell people to kind of hook into their stories. How did it work for you? How did it help you in your own life? And therefore, how can it help other people? Or how can it bring joy to other people or be cathartic to people? Like, why do people listen to death metal, right? <laughs> I mean, you're, or punk rock. Like, it's just something completely just energetic that you're just, it's, you got so much energy in your body or angst or anger or whatever, hatred even. You just need to get it out in the music and throwing your body around in a mosh pit. <laughs> I'm not saying to go do that. I had my little stint with that as a youngster. Hey, making my day. But um, yeah, I mean, these all serve a purpose and it can function uh, for a large segment of the population. You might think your artwork only speaks to you, but I guarantee you it speaks to a very strong group of people out there. I find that the more you share of your personal struggle or personal experience, the more other people react to it. More, more you can have an effect on other people. 
it's like the more you're giving of yourself, the more people want to receive. So just think about that. Um, and you're not going to be great at it overnight if you're not good at it right now. And maybe a little hook for you is just to figure out your process and talking about your process and thinking about your process while you're creating your art in your studio. Uh, just ponder it, meditate on it. I think you'll find the answer if you do that. Now, another aspect of telling a story in art, and I touched on this last week, and I touched on it in the beginning in the intro here with my dark children's story, but that is how you tell a story to yourself in your art. And maybe that's a story that helps you get motivated. Um, you know, this person at the beginning represents the person who has this preconceived notion of what it means to be an artist and how difficult it is to be an artist and a successful artist at that and how you're going to end up on the street. You got to have something to fall back on. You can't do this. You're not good enough. There's, you don't know enough people in the art world. You're not, you know, just you've heard it all. This is that kind of dialogue that every one of us is used to having with somebody, either in our family or a friend or a gallery owner or some sort of gatekeeper in the art world has told us that makes us feel, you know, it it's kind of shatters us a bit because we're delicate as artists. We're We're laying ourselves bare with our art and to have that kind of feedback is just not constructive, even if people think it is constructive. A lot of it is just somebody is vomiting out their own insecurity uh, onto you, basically. They're projecting that. And just developing a thick skin is something we all need to do, and I've talked about that many times. But in this instance, you can use that as fuel to show people or to motivate you to create better and better art. So, oh yeah, this person thinks I can't do it? Well, I'm going to show this person I'm going to use this. And once I get to the point where I'm making a living or whatever, I'm in this blue chip gallery, I can look back and go. At that point, the funny thing is you're not going to want to go, see, I told you, just doing it is going to be uh, satisfying enough. But it's one of those things where you can fantasize about doing it. It fuels you, especially when you're kind of getting started in your art career. And I talked about last time you can use love too. Love can be a great motivator. Your grandmother telling you how much she loves your work and how inspiring she thinks it is. That also can be a great motivator. So these stories that you tell yourself, these stories that have happened in your own life, these things that bounce around in your head when you're creating, these are also powerful stories for you as an artist to, to not only get creating, but to propel your career forward. You can also tell stories to get into art events or for specific art calls. You can say, I use this example on Clubhouse, if you're doing an environmental show or there's a call for a show about climate change, for example. Um, maybe you do work about rising tides. Um, for me personally, I do a lot of recycled materials. I find discarded materials on the streets and I turn that into my art a lot of the time. I use it for services or I build it into my assemblage or assemblage pieces. And that's very powerful for me. I love that. I love incorporating things that have been discarded into my work. And I know other people do too. That's a great hook and story that can help you tell the story of why your artwork is good enough to get into this show or to be juried into an exhibition or a competition or you name it. That's something that you need to be thinking about on a smaller scale like that. The final way I'm going to talk about how a story is uh, powerful is just in your overall art career for getting attention. I was mentioning the story of my Obama commission where I painted 12, 13 paintings of the president um, in such a short period of time that we're going to the inaugural Purple Ball and being given to celebrities like Ed Harris, Ashley Judd. I started telling the story and I realized that nobody knew what I was talking about. And they were like, what are you talking about? Tell this story. <laughs> and so I told the story and Alejandro was like, well, we got to talk about this later because I didn't know any of this. And for me, it's like an old story. It's a story I know about myself. Ooh, something's dinging. I'm leaving it in. Real life, baby. Real talk. Um, yeah, it was something that I, I thought was something that, you know, everybody was tired of hearing about. I was tired of talking about it because I know it so well in my own life, but I realized how few people actually know about that in my own life and how important it is to tell these stories over and over again so it kind of gets into the public consciousness um, or people actually take notice because people are busy. People don't pay much attention to you. That's the real deal. I mean, we think that, our lives are so important, and they are important, obviously, but 
we think that people are paying attention to what we're doing all the time, but they've got their own stuff going on too. So telling a story over and over again is, especially when it's a story worth telling, is a great tool because it kind of cements it into this public consciousness. And then I think, you know, the more you tell that unique story, the more people who respond to it, the more traction you're going to get in your own career. I didn't use that story at all when I first did it. I was like, oh, the story will tell itself. And it didn't. And I was green and I didn't know how to use it at the time. I didn't know how to take that and turn it into something else. I didn't know how to write a press release. I didn't know how to go to a gallery and use that as leverage. Um, All things that I wish I had back then, but it's still something that now I can leverage and I can talk about even though Uh, whatever 12 years have passed it's still a powerful story and it's still something that i'm extremely proud of so i'm sure we all have things like that in our own life something that you did in your career or with a specific piece or commission that was really interesting and unique that the world would love to hear about and don't be afraid to repeat that story that was something that um i thank alejandro for reminding me of and uh just giving me some you know a chance to think about it and go oh yeah that's right not a lot of people actually know about this even people who've been on my website don't know about it and it's on there so just tell your story and be proud of it so hopefully this has given you at least some inspiration to think about storytelling in your work and in your art career and to yourself and to everybody else the importance of it on many different levels uh, of your art and career and just ponder it. Think about it. Try to develop the skill. Start writing these things out. Journal if you have to, or just think about it. Meditate on it while you're working. I know it'll come to you. You can also get somebody else's perspective, somebody who knows you well. Just ask them what they think. And a lot of times they're going to be spot on, or they're going to at least spark something within yourself to plant the roots of the story that you want to tell. So hopefully this has been helpful. And once again, get a chance to uh, join our the Sustainable Artist Group slash club on Clubhouse. And hopefully we'll see you there. But in the meantime, we got a couple interviews coming up this next one and, and the following one after that that I'm excited about. So tune in. I've actually just been a little bit hesitant to do interviews right now with my back because I can't sit for very long. So I've been doing a lot of these solo monologues, which I love doing too. But I'm excited to get a couple interviews to throw into the mix now. So stay tuned for that next week. And thanks for listening, everybody. What? No good? No, no good. I don't need you. I'm telling my own story. And tell his own story he did. And now he is an artist of surprising notoriety and a smashing success. Thank you for tuning in to our program. This has been the Living Artist Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I just want you to know that I appreciate you being here, and I'm grateful to be in your ears. Your art and creative life on this planet is meaningful, so thank you for sharing it with me. If you like this podcast, whatever platform you're listening to it on, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also leave me a positive review to show your support. This helps me to reach more people with the algorithmic magic and keep the show going strong. If you want to see more of what I do and check out the art that I create, you can visit my website at www.pmsartwork.com or follow me on social media everywhere at PMS Artwork. That's it for now. See you back here next time.